Welcome to part one of the final episode of Elf in Space. We started our journey into the unknown with astronaut Sultana Nayadi almost six months ago. And over that time, we have delved deep into the daily lives of our astronauts, heard from leading scientists, listened to poetry, and spoken to artists, authors, and illustrators, all of whom have been inspired by a work in the field of space. The sun, stars, moon, and distant planets have occupied human minds since the dawn of time. Nomads, sailors, and farmers have looked to the night sky to seek information to guide their direction and actions for millennia. Tides, seasons, weather patterns, animal and human behavior are influenced by the movement of planet Earth and its relative position within our solar system. We've seen how man sought to learn more about space through telescopes, mapping the stars, and looking further than our solar system to those beyond. Information from space now influences our daily lives via notifications from satellites, communication networks, and images. Navigation has become so much simpler, communicating with each other across the globe and sharing information internationally is now the norm. Governments can work together to plan for disaster and mass movement and seek international support where necessary. Life-changing inventions in the field of medicine, technology, biological sciences, and engineering have all been possible thanks to space exploration, experiments carried out in space, and solutions to problems occurring in the unique environment on board the ISS. As we look to the future of space travel, find ways to inhabit the moon and other planets, and reach beyond planets on the outer edges of our solar system, mankind is taking giant leaps forward into what could only be imagined in the recent past. Thanks to the joint efforts of space centers and scientists around the world, the future of space travel and living is within our grasp. Journey of Elf in Space, just as that of Sultana Nayadi, would not have been possible without a huge amount of national international collaboration. Living and working in such a confined space as the ISS with fellow astronauts from all over the world means that a culture of tolerance and harmony is essential. With this shared sense of direction and common goals, space travel is a perfect example of how humanity working together can achieve momentous accolades. So we live as a family, a big family. You can call it space family on board the station. I can't think of a better place where people live in peace and harmony like the International Space Station. And I think if this is applicable on board the station, I think this is applicable here on Earth as well. Always try to know new people by traveling to different countries, knowing new people from different places. You will have this ability to, to work with different uh, mentalities, different people. On board the International Space Station, we are astronauts and cosmonauts from different countries. There's people from Russia, people from the United States. Currently, we have Arab astronauts traveling to space. Working with them uh, gives us this ability to gain new skills, new, I would say, treats and future that will help us. By having a network of satellites, we can see exactly what's going on on the ground. And one of the things that's important for, the, for disaster response is for this to be a global initiative. So actually we have what's called um, the International Charter for Space and Major Disasters. And this is over 24 years old now. And this allows all 17 space agencies and satellite operators to provide the satellite data for the monitoring, warning and impact of disasters to the country who are going through the disaster. Astronauts undergo rigorous training to ensure they're fit and prepared for all eventualities before they travel to space. To mimic the microgravity environment that they will experience, training is often carried out underwater, wearing specially designed suits to simulate spacewalks, and time underwater in subs to get astronauts used to the small spaces and floating that they will experience on board the ISS. We've seen many parallels between space travel and underwater exploration. 
I think it is equally important for us to be exploring, understanding this inner space environment that we have, this under the surface of the ocean kind of thing that goes deeper below the ocean than that, you know, the thickness of our atmosphere. We are absolutely obligated to understand that, to understand it before we go and mine it or, you know, scrape the bottom of it for something. We need to understand what exists there, how it connects to all of the other life that exists on this planet, and how that ocean itself is absolutely a, you know, it's a critical part of how we all survive on Earth. Yeah, the parallels to me are perfect in that what we plan are, are thinking about doing in space and the way you explore it, the same kinds of things we should be doing in our own ocean. When I, when I was very young, I was very lucky because I had some friends uh, in Bermuda who uh, helped teach me to dive. So I got a, a, that incredible sensation of when you're scuba diving or actually you're diving, you know, snorkeling. When you go below the surface and suddenly you are in another world. And that's almost like there's a par some parallels to space, I think, in there. Realms beyond our world have always stirred the human imagination. Great works of fiction, engaging children's stories, evocative poetry, soul-searching works of art, and fantastical films have all been inspired by images, thoughts, and dreams of space. The book is a, is a great source of uh, consuming time, a great source of uh, information, and this can help uh, building the rationale and uh, helping the human thinking about the overall journey here on, on Earth. A common sentiment shared by those who travel to space is a deep appreciation of our planet, its resources, and a greater resolve to learn about and protect our beautiful Earth. I felt being immersed in our planet, having it surround me in that way, in this place that was, you know, not intended for me to live in it, just like what happens on our space station. I felt like I was experiencing the awe and wonder of Earth in a way I, I almost couldn't imagine. Here, here I am in this, this gorgeous, preserved reef area, just stunning colors and the life that was surrounding us and just feeling like, man, this is another part of this planet that I don't know. We, you know, we, if we're immersed in it, need to equally as well appreciate and protect it as we do when we're on a spaceship thinking about it, you know, kind of as we're wrapping around it. In 17 steps, anything is possible, simple as Haiku. Those are the UN 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Throughout this book, I've tried to communicate to you some of the most fascinating topics related to the wonderful universe that we live in. From supernovae to binary stars and the James Webb Space Telescope, humanity has been fortunate enough to witness intrinsic natural phenomena and explore them using forms of technology that exponentially grow in complexity. The new Renaissance has arguably been the epitome of our exploration of space. However, I think it is safe to say that this epitome will be surpassed very soon. Our world is so precious and beautiful. Each ecosystem is carefully balanced and space exploration only emphasizes the great need to protect planet Earth at all costs. It is our home, our hope, and our future. Join us in part two as we approach new frontiers of space exploration and welcome our future astronauts. Now, it's your turn. Follow us on Elf in Space and find out this week's activity. Don't forget to share everything space with us.